Hi everyone, this is Lakshmi here. I'm an energy mafia so and today I'll be talking about my vision for the solar world. We all agree and pledge to the necessity of being carbon neutral. India recently committed in COP26 that it will achieve carbon neutrality by 2070. Thus, it is the responsibility of every corporate and every human being to be a part of this mission. Renewable energy sector holds the key for this transition as it is the most abundant and the cheapest source of energy available on earth. It's a paradox that India being a sunshine rich country is still energy deficit. We receive on an average 5 to 6 kilowatt hour per meter square per day and this amounts to about 657 million megawatt of energy. Just to give a perspective, the city of Bangalore alone has enough rooftop space that can power up about 3 gigawatt um, as per a recent government survey and we have installed so far as of August 2021 about 7 gigawatt in the rooftop space and 54 gigawatt across all sectors of solar. India today has pledged towards achieving 450 gigawatt of renewables in the next 10 years and solar is the top choice as it is the cheapest of all source of renewable energy. Imagine a world where solar energy becomes a part and parcel of our everyday life. Let's elaborate a bit more of this dream. You wake up in the morning and you switch on the geyser that's powered by solar. You receive your vegetable order in the morning and that's possibly grown in an agri-PV farm within the city limits. The backpack that you carry to work is powered by solar and acts as a ready pass standby power bank. Your EV car is now truly green because it is no longer powered by the fossil fuel fed energy grid and is powered by a solar carport. The office that you reach is truly an example of a green building where every facade of the building is an energy generating unit. Similarly, let us consider the possibility of integrating solar in every aspect of our building. It is not just the rooftop that is now solar. You have solar curtains and solar balconies and solar facades for the buildings. In a solar uh, curtain use case, you have the curtains that serve the purpose of not only darkening the room but has solar tiles embedded in it and can generate energy. The balconies are not made by just plain glass but have colored solar panels that are customized and are aesthetically designed to blend with the building architecture and can generate energy. Similarly, you can have solar fences that give boundary protection and at the same time can connect to the grid and export power. And what if our entire highways and the railway network is covered with elevated solar panel structures? This serves the purpose of generating energy and, and at the same time can protect the rail and road network from harsh weather conditions that it is traditionally exposed to and can generate energy and put it to the grid. Possibilities like this are endless. So let's zoom into how renewable energy can cut across the rural landscape and enable our 6 lakh plus Indian villages with energy efficient distributed microgrids. With an agri-PV farm, a farmer can now cultivate on 100% of the land and can also lease the land to solar developers and thereby get a steady income. Today, a farmer's income is completely subjected to the vagaries of the monsoons and an agri-PV farm can potentially provide a stable income throughout the year. Also, the transpiration from the plant results in cooler temperature and improves the overall energy generation of a solar panel. And this is a win-win situation. Now, let's take the 1 megawatt agri-PV farm that's installed on a 5-acre land and can potentially power up 2,000 plus village homes. And at the same time, cater to agro-processing industry like sugar, rice and wheat. Each of these industries will be now closer to the source of energy generation and thereby save on the transportation cost as well as the distribution losses and at the same time can independently contribute their bit by turning carbon neutral. Another possibility of dual usage of land is a floating solar farm that can be constructed on 
artificially built ponds and these ponds will act as a source of drinking water for the villagers and will also supply energy for the village home. Another important sector that needs to be considered for carbon neutrality is the transport sector. Today, India imports about $64 billion of oil every year and with skyrocketing prices, there is an urgent need to replace it with another alternative. Today, we have EV for cars and green hydrogen for heavy vehicles as the most promising solutions. But if we have to make them truly green, they need to be ultimately powered by solar energy. Let me share an interesting story on understanding the movement of sun. Thousands of years ago, ancient Indian architects built marvelous temple architecture that can beautifully capture solar phenomena like equinox. And one such outstanding temple architecture is the Padmanabha Swami temple where on the equinox date, one gets to witness this phenomena where the descending sun in the western sky passes through the different window in the Gopura every five minutes. And the beauty is it happens only twice a year. And this engineering marvel wouldn't have been possible but for the profound knowledge that our ancestors had in the subject. Now, a thousand years later, we claim to understand the signs of sun movement for solar applications. There are several initiatives and startups across the world working towards improving energy efficiency in solar panels and making solar panels more affordable. And we have also embarked on a similar journey and have developed an efficient solar panel that improves the energy generation by 20% more. Just like a new car with a better mileage, our solar panels offer more solar mileage, which essentially means more units of power and more revenue from selling that power. And how exactly are we doing this? Just like a sunflower that can seamlessly track the sun through the day, our solar panels with its inbuilt motion-free optical tracking technology can seamlessly track the sun and harness more power all through the year. Our panels work well during the solar window which is for a limited period of time from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. One innovation which improves the effective usage of solar panel is the east-west orientation but it is not widely deployed today. We are working on innovation that can accelerate the deployment of east-west orientations of panels and make them more effective and thereby have solar power available from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Beyond this, we still need to make renewables available during the evening and in the night. Imagine Australia's evening power requirements is met by solar power plants in Indonesia and Indonesia's evening power requirements are met by India, so on and so forth. India is leading this proposal of one world, one sun and one grid and has recently signed a pact with UK to create the same. This not only makes solar projects very attractive but also helps us have a sustainable future. Solar has already met parity with coal five years back at the utility scale. Today, the ROI of rooftop solar is about five years and not many are aware of various tax incentives and rebates offered by the government. For example, the government offers an accelerated depreciation of 80% in the first year of project commissioning for a commercial solar project. What we need is a systematic awareness among the consumers to adopt solar technologies and a continuous push for newer technologies to increase the efficiency and adoption. We are almost there and all that we need to do is just hit that accelerate button, make solar the default choice and make it work for everyone. We all invest time and money for vacation every year. In a similar manner, I would sincerely urge every one of you to take an oath to take sustainability vacations and invest in solar rooftop for your homes and communities and adopt upcoming solar solutions in the coming years. Little drops of water make a mighty ocean and together we can accelerate this march to a carbon neutral world by 2070. Thank you.